This video captured a day before an even larger eruption of the same underwater volcano rocks the island nation of Tonga. Nature's wrath can be extremely ruthless, as the residents of many parts of Australia have found out over the summer. Major cities were flooded, leading to immense loss of property and displacement, and the cause of all of the destruction can be traced back to the devastating underwater volcanic eruption that occurred in Tonga. For many years, there has been fear in the scientific community that any increase in volcanic activity in Tonga would result in massive flooding in Australia, and their fears were realized when this exact thing happened. So join us as we explore how Tonga's volcanic eruption created the worst floods in Australia's history. Late last year and earlier this year, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hyapai volcano in Tonga erupted and all the Australian islands suffered massive repercussions, especially as a result of the second eruption. The second eruption occurred at 3.10 p.m. Australia time on the 17th of January off the shoreline of Tonga, and even as much as three days later, the effects were still felt in Australia. According to Sarah Scully of the Bureau of Meteorology, the original eruption sent 1,000 km per hour seismic waves around the world that could be seen from space. The eruption released a tremendous amount of energy and caused tsunamis all across the Pacific Ocean as well as off the eastern coast of Australia. Analysis of the main sea level pressure showed a bounce in atmospheric pressure as the shock wave travels west, reaching Norfolk Island first, then Brisbane around 5.30 p.m. local time, eventually reaching Perth near 7 p.m. local time. On the mainland, cities experienced waves from 0.48 meters up to 0.82 meter waves. Unsurprisingly, for a tsunami that powerful, a series of bangs related to the volcano eruption was heard in and around Anchorage, Alaska, approximately 9,700 kilometers away from the volcano, and lasted about 30 minutes. Low-frequency noise and booms were heard even as far as Yukon, Canada, and temporary tsunami warnings were issued for New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, and Tasmania. However, the most devastating effects were felt in Australia because the volcanic eruption increased the amount of water in the Southern Hemisphere stratosphere by about 20%. Typically, water reflects solar radiation back into space while reflecting Earth radiation back to the surface. So as a result, the Earth's surface warms while the stratosphere cools. The stratosphere over Antarctica has been 1 to 3 degrees cooler than usual over the last month. This cold air in the atmosphere is strengthening the polar vortex, which is the wind that swirls around Antarctica. The Southern Annular Mode SAM, is one of Australia's climate drivers measures this polar vortex. The powerful westerlies stay closer to Antarctica when the polar vortex and SAM are stronger than usual, as they were after the eruption. Thus, Southern Australia experiences fewer colder fronts and less wind. This allows the east coast from about Brisbane to Hobart to have more days with onshore winds bringing additional rain. Normally, forecasting the SAM months in advance is difficult, but the volcanic eruption increased the likelihood that the SAM will remain in a positive phase until at least the end of the summer rather than a few days or weeks. So, for the vast majority of the East Coast, and to a smaller degree, the Eastern Island, this resulted in wetter-than-usual weather right up until the end of summer, causing flooding in many areas. The ash cloud from the volcano, which could be seen from Northern Australia, rose more than 19 kilometers into the air, and took several days, up to weeks even, to dissipate despite the best efforts of scientists who tried to clear the ash. Residents of Queensland were treated to perhaps the only positive effect of the volcanic eruption when they awoke to a pink and orange sunrise caused by light reflecting through the massive ash cloud. That was the only silver lining in this ash cloud. However, the volcanic ash cloud in Tonga was so dense that Australia and New Zealand were unable to send planes to assist. Aside from the effects seen on the ground, there were several observations made from space regarding the eruption of the Tonga volcano. Researchers discovered hurricane-like gusts of wind and strange electric currents in the ionosphere. 
Earth's upper atmosphere layer, more than 60 miles in the air at the edge of space in the hours following the eruption. These findings were based on data from NASA's Ionospheric Connection Explorer and European Space Agency satellites. Strong winds were also generated in the Earth's atmosphere as a result of the volcanic eruption, and the thinner atmospheric layers caused the wind to move faster skyward. When the winds entered the ionosphere, they were traveling at 450 miles per hour, which is much faster than a Category 5 hurricane. The eruption not only sent atmospheric shockwaves and sonic booms across the globe, but also cast its effects into space, which were seen by a combination of satellite images taken by the Himawari 8 Japanese weather satellite, owned by the Japanese Meteorological Agency and released by the National Institute for Information and communication technology. Before the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hayapai volcanoes eruption, only 118 submarine volcanoes had erupted in more than 11,700 years of the Earth's recorded existence. Of those 118 events, only Krakatoa eruption off the Indonesian islands in 1883 was thought to have been as fierce as the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hayapai eruption and it was responsible for over 36,000 deaths. Its explosions were heard more than 3,110 kilometers away in Perth, Western Australia, and Rodriguez near Mauritius, which is 4,800 kilometers away. The sound was reportedly heard in a total of 50 different locations around the world, and it was recorded that the sound wave traveled almost seven times around the globe. The Krakatoa volcano eruption was one of the most devastating eruptions, and its effects have left islands desolate to date. The eruption spurred tsunamis about 46 meters high, blew out the eardrums of sailors close to the eruption, and even brought about a volcanic winter of ash and smug. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai had a similar eruption which is the largest of the 21st century. This time, shockwaves traveled around the world a total of six times, just one less than the Krakatoa volcano eruption in 1883. Also, unlike the Krakatoa volcano's eruption, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano eruption spewed not only smoke and ash into the atmosphere, but also blasted water upwards in vast quantities reaching a height of 52 kilometers into the atmosphere. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano rises about 2,000 meters from the sea floor and has a caldera that was roughly 150 meters below sea level before 2022 eruption and is recorded as being 4 kilometers wide. The only major parts of the volcano that can be seen on the surface of the water are the twin uninhabited islands of Hunga Tonga and Hunga Haapai which form part of the northern and western rim of the caldera, respectively. These two islands were heavily impacted by the eruption of the volcano, as they have always been whenever there has been any activity with the volcano. The islands used to exist as a single landmass between 2015 and 2022, after being brought together by volcanic activity of a volcano cone in VEI-2 volcano eruption in 2014-2015, but after the 2022 eruption, they were separated again and the islands have reduced in size. According to the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, other coastal towns on Tonga Tapu's main island suffered serious damage, with 60 to 70 percent of cattle growing households reporting animal losses, property damage, and public water pollution. The United Nations Satellite Center reported that 260 buildings on Namuka Island were compromised, devastated, or flooded, with nearly all of them covered in ash. The eruption caused significant damage to Tonga's agricultural sector, affecting crops, livestock, and fisheries. Such a large-scale devastation occurred because the latest tsunami forecasting models and alarm systems were unable to anticipate the effects of the shock waves radiating outwards from the eruption at the time of the eruption. The detectors were designed to function for earthquake-generated tsunamis, not submarine volcanoes after all. A similar-sized volcanic activity is expected to occur at least once this century, according to scientists. 
they have assigned this event a 1 to 6 chance of occurring, making it almost certain. Scientists believe the Tonga eruption should serve as a heads up because ice cone data suggests that an eruption of magnitude 7 or higher this century is about 17% possible. The effects of such could be tens to hundreds of times greater than in Tonga. According to the studies, eruptions of this size have in the past caused abrupt climate changes and the demise of civilizations and have been linked to the emergence of pandemics. Do you fear scientists are right and there might be more of this to come? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more and click the bell icon so you get notified whenever a new video drops.